I decided to take a plunge and go back to the swing in 60s, where marionettes or super marination was welcome into every child's home on a Saturday morning, where super cool models are highlights of the show, with characters who had that glassy eye look I've seen somewhere before. I'm not talking about legendary creator Jerry Anderson's Thunderbird flagship show. No, I'm talking about the Underwater Sea Adventure series that has one of the coolest character names ever, Captain Troy Tempest in a television show from 1964 to 1965. If you enjoy this one and would like me to go through the series, just leave a comment below. Thank you. I myself grew up mainly watching the Thunderbirds as a kid. I never caught Fireball XL, Supercar, or Stingray on the telly till later in life. So stumbling across this has been a blast from the plastic placid past. Episode one starts off like any great opening. Stand by for action. A cruise through the old aquarium neighborhood to a local pair of Gilmen, or could they be Innsmouthians? Actually, they're from the underwater city called Titanica, which is wicked cool by the way. After the merman sink that vessel, the World Aquanaut Security Patrol, or WASP, is brought in to investigate. They send their two best, honestly their only men, Captain Troy, Tempest, and Phones. Phones picks up something on his headset, not overly concerned by what he hears. <laughs> Panic's over, <laughs> it's just a fish. A big one, but it's only a fish. And I thought we were going to see some action. They are suddenly torpedoed and Captain Tempest gives up all too quick. Great. We're stranded at the bottom of the ocean. We can't even contact base. Guess our luck's run out, Bones. Captured by King Titan of Titanica, Tempest also meets a new lady friend, Marina. She cannot speak. None of her race know the luxury of words. She is my slave. Captain Tempest is sent to one of the most bizarre trials I've ever witnessed. This goes on, and to be honest, I was looking as confused as old Tempest here on what in Sam Hill was going on. Though I have to say, due to the fish god moving about, I was on pins and needles the whole time, waiting to hear the verdict. Captain Troy Tempest of the World Equinaut Security Patrol, you and your crew have been found guilty. It is decreed that you are doomed to die. Commander Sam Shore, back at headquarters, calls off the search after losing contact with Captain Tempest and the Stingray. So he moves forward with... I'm gonna give it to you straight, Atlanta. We're gonna bombard the entire area with hydromic missiles. When his daughter and Tempest's above-ground lady friend, Lieutenant Atlanta Shore, questions her father, he responds very matter-of-factly. Look, honey, this is a tough organization and we're doing a tough job. Something or someone has started all this and we've got to finish it. As Tempest and Phones are transported to their cells, Phones decides it's a good time to throw a little shade on the captain. Nice people, they only bother with the big fish. You get convicted and we both get the sentence. Marina goes ahead and frees our heroes, only for the merman to go down like a kid's toy with a swift kick from Tempest. Tempest and Phones commandeer the merman's vessel to tow back their limp sub to headquarters, just in time. It's Stingray! Ooh. Hold the interceptors! We end on Marina being introduced to the team. Alana's response is exactly what you would expect. Well, I certainly know what I'm up against. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like one of these marionettes needs to lay off the old tobacco. I'd be curious how this show continues if Tempest and Phones can make it through an episode without being captured, and if Marina will ever say anything. So, if you would like to witness what it would be like to watch James Gardner as a super marinated character, with all the action of what you used to play with with your action figures, then this series might just be for you. Until next time. <laughs> So click links below to be notified. Many thanks for the support, and Hail Cthulhu!